Hi guys, thanks for viewing. I am Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, I've received some emails with questions. So please, if you have done, been one of these people, please know I've got a few to get through. So today's question about heaven is NDEs. Those are near-death experiences, okay? NDEs come back with acute psychic abilities. Why? Okay. Theories exist. We can base them on other people's experiences, which is what I do. I don't just look at my own NDE from 2001. I look at thousands of other experiences because I try and piece together all those commonalities and similarities. You know, you have, uh, and I'm, please know if this does upset anybody, please go and talk to someone about how you're feeling, okay? Whether it be a friend, family, or a professional doctor or someone, okay? So let's go there when we die. Okay. We have people who die in different situations. Drownings, suicides, murders, people falling off cliffs. <laughs> okay. There are many different ways that we can die. Okay. Then why is it that someone who has died of an overdose will have still the same experience of someone who has never taken drugs or alcohol in their life? So we can't say it's some drug-induced situation that occurs within the brain. It must be a chemical reaction that is a natural reaction to our death. Okay? So when we look at this reaction, the action is we're dying. Okay? Let's try and make this a little bit funny because it's really not, right? But we're all mortal. We're going to face this at some point. Ah, please email me if this does upset you, right? But I do want to go there today because this is what proves psychic abilities, okay? Because when we die, our body does emit a lot of chemical reacting, which is a reaction to what is occurring within the body, okay? Okay. So the scientists out there, you know, science specialists, because that's why it's called scientist with the IST, because it's a science specialist, okay, scientist. They look at physical um, theories that would establish a reason of proof as to why this occurs. However, people have been there like me, people who are spiritual and we know all this spiritual stuff can never be um, physically held or documented in a lab we know how this works okay so what happened with me is that I've always been a psychic medium since I was born ever since I was a kid I've been able to see ghosts spirits or whatever entity and I've also had the knowing which I'll explain in a moment, okay? That knowing, I've had that all of my life. So then I go to my mum and she told me this story years ago about how I was a very sickly child in hospital and there were nights, plural, plural nights, when mum and dad would be driving me to a hospital and mum said I was blue while they were still getting me to the hospital. So did I have an NDE or more when I was a child, a baby? Because it would certainly justify my first ever memory. My first ever memory is in my book, Five Years to Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven, because it's where I'm talking about her. Her. Who is this lady? Okay. Um, so I think it's the first instance because it, yes my first instance which is on page six first instance I was in the hospital the single bed that was it seemed dynamic gig, um, gigantic due to the smallness of my body because I was only a baby there were plastic sheeting hanging from the ceiling connected to the floor and in my perspective I had no idea at this time that I was in a makeshift oxygen tent 
I clearly remember my mother on the other side of the plastic. I could see her through the transparent sheeting. Okay, so I'm looking around and I'm a baby sitting on this huge bed and I'm looked down and I see that I'm still wearing my nappy. Okay, so I looked, I could not understand why I felt so good when my mum was so upset. She, so I looked at the others who were sitting on my bed. There were three of them all sitting with me on the bed. One of them was her. Now, my mum and the doctor, they were looking at me. I've got this memory. I can still see them looking at me through the, through the plastic. So this is a real experience, guys. I was only about 18 months old, sitting on this huge hospital bed. And who are these three people sitting there with me? Huh. Were they ghosts, spirits, other entities? Well, I've now discovered that she is another entity. Angel, archangel, guardian angel, ascended master, whatever she is. Descended, um, deceased grandmother, I don't know. Okay, so NDE has come back with this acute psychic ability. Why do I remember that memory? Because it's like yesterday. When I died in 2001, that five years that I went to heaven, even standing there in front of these big three, that seems like yesterday. There's no time. And this is a commonality that we get with a lot of people who have had NDEs. You know, we talk to people who had their NDE back in the, like the 1970s and the 1990s. Mine was in 2001. And they all say the same thing. It was like it happened yesterday because there's no time. So we're still connected energetically, which is also our emotional attachment because I speak about this a lot because energy is our emotions, okay? It's all mixed together. So we are still energetically connected to where we were way back when we had our NDE. So there's no, I don't believe, this is me, my perspective here, I do not believe that there is a physical location where we go because it's not in this dimension to see it. Bingo, okay? So why do we come back with acute psychic abilities? I'm going to read another quote now because I've got my finger in there. So this is on page... 208 of my book okay so I'm talking about how when I woke up <laughs> I had no idea because I'd been five years where I didn't have to go to the toilet I didn't have to eat I didn't have to fart I didn't have to burp yawn or even blink my eyes it all seemed so weird okay so I say here in this book even before I arrive back to the house which, in which I died, my ESP and perception were totally attuned and in sync with the universe. So oh, I say some pretty amazing, brilliant things happened to me right from the first moments from waking up in the ICU room in hospital. Let's go there with some things that happened to me when I first woke up. Okay, you ready? I remember waking up and they were pulling this blue tube out of my throat because, hello, I'm very short-sighted and they're pulling this tube out of my throat and I could see it. <laughs> Look at it here. And the lady's saying, squeeze my hand if you can see me. Okay. So I woke up and it was a pretty, pretty groggy day, the first day. They moved me into this room. Actually, it was before then because I was still in ICU. A nurse came up to me and she... She's, you know, doing my blood pressure, doing my temperature, blah, 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 blah. And I looked at her. I'd had no idea who she was, but I looked at her and I said, how's Motley? Two words. She nearly fell over. She sort of like corrects herself. And she says, what do you know about Motley? And I said, come on. You've been here all week telling me about your cat. He's an old cat. He's got long fur. He's got kidney trouble. You took him to the vet. The vet told you it's $3,000 for the pills to fix Motley. 
you don't know whether to get put him down you don't know whether to get a new kitten you don't know what to do you've been thinking about him all week and telling me about it she looked at me and she said I do have a cat called Motley oh and I also told her he was 14 years old she said yes he is 14 years old he has got kidney trouble it is three thousand dollars you could write there the doctor um, the vet confirmed it I don't know whether to put him down. I don't know whether to get a new cat for him, like a retirement pet. I don't know what to do. But then she said, funny thing though, this is the first time I've been in the ICU ward. I usually work two floors down. So there's no way possible that you have seen me before today. And I've never mentioned Motley at work. How does that work, guys? I'll tell you how it works. Because there's no time. Right, you gotta you gotta stay with me here. There's no time. So even though I was in a coma <laughs> on life support, <laughs> she's working two floors down. I knew that in a week's time she was gonna be standing right next to me. So I've got that energetic connection a week before we met. Wow, boom. I knew all this stuff about her because it's what she was thinking. Remember how we talk about our thoughts and how we think we create? Yes, because it's now pretty well proven. What we think we create, right? Why do you think certain government agencies are trying to stop us doing that? Because they don't want us having that control, right? So let's get back to point here. So when we have this energetic connection, it's something that we know is going to happen. It's like premonition. But there's there's no way of, you know, when we have when I have a premonition dream, I go to bed and I dream. Now this is one I'll go there with. Um in the 1980s, I dreamt the Melbourne Cup. That's a race, a horse race, every year in Australia. It's in the first way, first Tuesday in November, okay? Melbourne Cup. You can go Google it, okay, because it's huge, okay? They, they have a public holiday down in Melbourne, so everyone can go to the race and bet on the horses, okay? So I had this dream three days before the race, because my things are usually three days before, which I can't understand that. So three nights before, I'm lying in bed and I'm standing at the finish line and I can feel the wind making my hair tickle my nose. That's how vivid and lucid it was. And I'm watching the horses coming around and sure enough, I saw which one won it. Now, I went up and I put some money on this horse and I won $20,000 back in the 1980s. Can you imagine how much that money would be now, 45 years later, okay? It was a lot of money back then, okay? You know, half a house type thing now, right? So let's look at it. What, why did I dream that dream? I didn't really have much connection to the horses. I didn't have much connection to the race. And I did certainly had no... Um, no connection at all to the horse but I did have a huge connection to the jockey who rode it I was reading Kerry in the 80s you know that book Kerry about the girl with telekinesis and she goes to a prom and everybody doesn't have a good experience I was reading Christine about a certain car who had an intellectual um, capability to drive itself and run people over. I was reading books like Pet Cemetery, Reanimation of Dead Animals, okay? Ooh. So what is this got in common with a certain race at the Melbourne Cup? The jockey and the author of those books was named Stephen King. Huh. So we have this connection. Even though in, I did not know the races, I did not know which horses, I didn't certainly don't follow the jockeys, 
But because my little brain is putting out all of this pheromones or chemicals or whatever the hell you want to call it about Stephen King, in all that ether of the unknown energy, it's found Stephen King, the jockey. Now, this is my theory of how this all works. Because how would I know that nurse in ICU a week while well, she's you know a week before when she's working downstairs unless we were physically going to interact a week later where I would have to know all that information about her okay so then I look at the Stephen King writing it the horse was called let's elope okay so you can go research this this was cute it's real let's elope l-e-t apostrophe s-e-l-o-p-e Melbourne Cup winner in the 1980s. I dreamt that dream three nights before it happened. You'll see he won. Like, he really did win that race. You could see his, his the horse. There was no one other horses around him, okay? It wasn't like neck-to-neck situation. So, anyway, I still remember it. It's like yesterday. See, I'm seeing that horse race playing out in front of me right now like it happened yesterday because there's no time. <gasps> See, so we've got to take time out of psychic abilities. So let's go there with the knowing, because I mentioned that before, okay? Knowing things. How did I know about a cat? How did I know it was 14 years old? How did I know all the kidney problems that it had? Unless she was thinking it. Boom. Because what we think, we create. And that's how psychics know things before it happens okay um let's just go there when i do my psychic readings okay people say to me can you tell me if i'm going to get this job and i know if they're working in that job because i see it like a little scene oh yeah I can see you working in this office and you're holding a lot of pens and you've got this board up in front of you and you're drawing all diagrams on the board because I'm going forward in time due to my psychic ability because there's no time and I'm seeing what this person's doing in six months so then this person says to me oh you know at the moment I work in a bank but I want to get into architecture And there I am seeing that they've got this board and drawing all these things up on the board like designing house plans and stuff. So that's how psychic ability works. It's all through that connection, okay? That's why when when we um, like holding objects, here's my ring, right? This is my ruby ring. I love my ruby ring, right? So when someone comes to me with like a ring and I hold the ring, which is called psychometry, by the way. So we can actually pick up all that energy connected to the ring. So we know who's won the ring before it. We know if this ring's ever been like to the beach or in a plane, because now we're connected to where this ring has been previously. Okay? So that's how it works. It's all energetic connection. The more we think the more we do create. And this is natural phenomenon. Psychic abilities are natural phenomenon. Okay? So I'm not going to do it today because I don't like my videos going over 20 minutes, but I'm going to start doing development of how to do this. Okay? So the big one, yeah, I won't even do it today because I don't want it to go over 20 minutes. Okay? So I hope that that's helped you today. NDE has come back with acute psychic abilities. Why? It's because we're in this place where there is no time. We're tapped into the source. So when we come back, we're still in that energetic plane of having their, or is it our, natural abilities. Okay? So we're tapped in. And because we remember it so much like yesterday, (coughs) even though in my NDE was 21 years ago, we're still tapped into it like it's now in the present because they have no time. So tell me your thoughts on that theory, guys, because it is only a theory, okay? Don't trust what I say. Go out and do your own research. Find this stuff out if you're really intrigued by it. 
because that's what I'm here for to make you interested in this stuff so it makes you think hmm wonder if she's right comment below what you think guys love your work if you have um, liked today's video and you do want to put some dollars in the tip jar, the link is below. Okay, guys, love your work. Talk to you all soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.